everyone, how are you doing? I'm Sarah coming at you with a brand new So Craftastic video. This week, I went to Dollar Tree. I may or may not have went to three different Dollar Trees. Roll clips. Okay, so their craft section was not quite as big as I thought. So we have two more tries. There's a couple of Dollar Trees right around here that we're going to hope for the best with. Let's go. Head east toward North Holland, Sylvania Road. We have arrived. All right, here is the craft stuff. They have different stuff here, but not some of the stuff as the other one. Um, so I think we're gonna try that third store. I do like this stuff. Look how cute this is. Alright, on to the third one. Continue. Head north toward <laughs> South Reynolds Road. Siri was a little confused. Dollar Tree number three. I had this really awesome idea to test every single new Dollar Tree arts and crafts supply, art and crafts supply. None of them had everything that they were supposed to according to some of the videos that I looked up. Like I saw this announcement on Facebook that Dollar Tree had a brand new craft section. I have a friend who has way more at her Dollar Tree in Oregon and we're gonna do a video together next week so stay tuned for that. Where do we got her? But yeah, very soon. We can still make art with these supplies. You do what you can with what you got. Should I make merch of that? <laughs> Seriously, why have I not made merch yet though? I'm going to try to create some mixed media pieces, paintings, and do that really cool palette knife trending paint thing. You know, this. Without further ado, let me show you everything I got. Dollar Tree haul. This is how I become a tree. I purchased all these items for $38.07 total after tax. I got four different colors of Art Time Tempera Paint, as well as three different tubes of the Jot Acrylic Paint. This guy was broken, had a hole in it, was leaking, it was the only orange paint left in this tube, so the really nice owner, manager, whoever, gave me a discount for 50 cents instead of a dollar. Well, the joke was on me because when I got home, I found out that this too is <laughs> punctured. It has this giant slit in it, and it is also leaking. Just my luck. Lucky green. Honestly, it's still fine though, because after the paint dries over the hole, you can use it, and it, it kind of like contains itself in there. Carrot colors. There's one jar of Crayola paint, a pack of glittery poster paint, and a pack of this paint pot set with six different colors. One pack of awful paintbrushes, you'll see a giant wooden flower shape, a three pack of glitter glue, and these two fabric paints in black and white. Two bags of glitter glue sticks, a pack of art palettes, there's six in there, these three palette knives in a bag, and these Air Brains stencil sets that have all different patterns. A few different sizes of these canvas panels as well as stretched canvas, and finally, these five packs of stickers. The bigger sets are 3D or pop-ups and they're really cute, but so are the plant ones in the middle. I was really surprised to find these canvas panels there and especially ones this big. Ready, set, let's make some art. Oh man, ow. 
For this first piece, I'm using a 5x7 inch stretched canvas panel. I'm going to grab one of the paint mixing palettes and some yellow paint and white and I'm going to mix those together to create kind of a pastel yellow. I did put a little bit too much of the yellow in so I added more white after to lighten it up. It just comes out really quickly so I should have been a little bit more careful but all is well. I ended up with this color and I'm just showing you the canvas now. So here's the paintbrush. It's actually not as bad as I thought. The bristles are a little bit softer than I expected, but they are kind of bushy. So with that paintbrush, I was able to paint the canvas pretty easily and I just covered the entire thing as well as the edges. For this, you might have to wait a little bit for parts of it to dry so you don't get your hands all dirty and like fingerprints all over the paint. But while it is drying, I went ahead and got some glitter glue ready because I want to mix the gold and a little bit of red in with the paint. Now I want to try out these stencils. I thought that the swirly ones would look pretty cool. This kind of reminds me of the Price is Right. Anyone else? I don't know. It kind of has that like 70s vibe to it with the orange. Maybe that's why I'm thinking of the 70s just because of this yellow and orange together. But I didn't want it to be perfect. It does come with adhesive on the back. I didn't use that. I just held it down with my fingers. And once I did lift it up, you can see that a lot of it bled underneath and it didn't make a crisp um, shape, but that's fine because I am, you'll see in a second why I want it to be this fuzzy. So here, I am using this llama sticker and I thought the contrast between the orange and the blue, they are complementary colors, right? I always like need to look at it to remember. I like them together and I figured that I didn't want the emphasis to be on some crisp shapes. I wanted it to kind of be a texture instead and resemble the llama's fur. At this point, I was going to be done, but I'm like, this is not enough. This looks way too boring. So I ended up adding a little bit more texture with some glue sticks. I'm taking the gold one here, and after it heated up, I just put dots all over the canvas. Actually, not really all over, but I scattered them um, just a few around so it would add more interest to the piece. That really, really helped to tie the piece together. So here is now what it looks like. Still very simple, but hey, it was all done with Dollar Tree supplies. All right, now for the piece you have been waiting for, I'm using this bigger canvas in 8x10 and I just squirted the white temper paint right on there. I thought that it would be pretty satisfying to show you. I did end up putting a little bit too much on. I didn't show this on camera, but I took the paintbrush and I brushed globs back into the container so I would get a nice even layer of paint on there. Now I'm going to try painting with these palette knives. If I am correct, I don't believe I've ever done this before. I don't remember it if I did. So this is going to be interesting. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I have seen videos of this method. They're pretty popular nowadays. It's a few channels that do this. One in particular, and I already mentioned it at the beginning, but I'm just going to take these dots of acrylic paint here. Or no, these are tempera. Well, some are tempera, some are acrylic. Excuse me. So the yellow is acrylic, and after that I am doing some green along the bottom. And I'm taking this palette knife, and I'm going to spread the paint. This is a very short commercial break to let you know that I have reopened my vlog channel, Live Love Sarah Lynn. I will post the link in the description box below, as well as the corner up there, the eye card. Okay, back to the video. This was really relaxing and satisfying to do. So I really recommend that you guys try this. It is harder than it looks though. So at first I had no idea what I was doing. I thought that these colors looked a lot like a sunset, but I'm like, how am I gonna do that? I haven't actually studied the method on how to do this, but hey, it's an abstract painting. So 
I just spread the color all over the top half of the canvas and I left a little bit of white area and I'm like, okay, maybe that part could be clouds. So I did put some white paint down after and some more yellow. I wanna blend the white and yellow together and then blend the yellow into the green at the bottom like I'm doing here. And you can add more paint as needed. So I did put more white in with the green and I kind of made a gradient from like a light green all the way up to the darkest red at the very top. At this point, I had an idea. I'm like, it kind of looks like sand, kind of like a sky, kind of like grass. So it's basically a field in front of a desert, in front of a sunset sky. That is what I'm going with. It's like mountainy desert. I did this really cool thing with the foreground. I made these textured lines. So I thought that was a neat added element. This paint does stay wet for quite a while, so you have a while to work with it. I decided to add more yellow and white into the sky above the mountains to separate the two, like the background and the foreground. I wanted this to resemble a sky, like I said, so I put a giant yellow blob for a sun and I put some white for clouds. The last thing I went ahead and did was add a couple cacti, cactuses. <laughs> I wanted to do everything with the palette knife except for the thing that you'll see after this, but I did make the outline of the cactus with the palette knife. I made both of them. And then I wanted a little bit of texture on it, so I took the paintbrush. And this is the only time I wish that they were a little bit more stiff because I wanted to create a pokey dotted texture on the cactus. Cat, cat canvas? I was like, canvas, cactus? Yes, both. <laughs> I really enjoyed this and I think it's something that I want to try again in the future. So you guys let me know in the comments if it's something that you would want to see. I post a brand new video here every single Friday, so be sure to ring that bell if you want to turn notifications on and never miss out. Also, please subscribe, click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed, and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. See you next week. Bye. Da, 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 da. Um, I'm a tree. <laughs>